Hey, Eddie, how are you? I am doing well. How are you? Doing well. They changed up the Zoom link on us, and I'm wondering if people are uh, still looking for the new one. I've tried to post it as broadly as I can, but uh, people may need a couple extra minutes to join here today. Yeah, no worries. All right, here they come. Hey, hey, folks, glad you were able to get the new meeting link. Thanks. Yeah, we clicked on the meeting invite. I think there's a few people on the other one. Well, I'm Andrew and the guy called Paz is on there. So I'm, I'm just going to paste this link into the chat on the wrong one. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, I only found out about the change yesterday. I've tried to circulate it as widely as I could, but I think if it was stuck on their calendar already, I don't have a way to update that. Matthew, should we give those folks a, a few more minutes to hop over to this call? Uh, yeah, sorry, Anika. Yeah, so I did post it in the everyone chat on the on the other link. So uh, I think it looks even like some people are coming across now. Okay, great. Perfect. Yep, I see some more folks joining. Okay, well, <clears throat> we are a few minutes after, but I think we can probably go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone to today's Firefly community call. Uh, this call is being recorded as you were probably notified when you joined. So just wanted to point that out. Uh, just a couple quick housekeeping things. Uh, as a, uh, a public Hyperledger community call, this uh, the recording of this call will be posted afterward. And uh, we also need to abide by the Linux Foundation antitrust policy and uh, code of conduct, which are both linked in, uh, should be on your screen right now, and uh, both linked in today's agenda. So if you have any questions about those, 
you haven't had a chance to read them before, please go check that out. And uh, with that, we can jump into today's agenda. So uh, the, the first item on uh, the agenda for today is a, uh, is a proposal for new maintainers, which I'm really excited about. Uh, I want to introduce to the, I'm, I'm sure you probably had a, a chance to meet or had interactions with uh, both Matthew Whitehead and Chen, and they have both been uh, making fantastic contribu contributions to uh, a variety of places in the, the Firefly project, uh, but prim primarily in the EVM connect connector, which is one of the uh, it's one of the, the more foundational, one of the lower la level layers of the stack and a really important piece of the project. Uh, so uh, Matt and Chang have, have demonstrated significant thought leadership in, uh, in the, the future and the direction of the blockchain connector and uh, have just been uh, making fantastic contributions to the project. I want to bring them on as maintainers so they can uh, move to actually approving pull requests as well, which they have been actively participating in already. And uh, so, so the way the process works is uh, I'm, I'm proposing, I'm sponsoring them as the existing maintainer. And at the next community call, uh, we will have a vote. Uh, if existing maintainers are not able to attend the call, they will be able to vote via email as well, which I will, I will send out an email to coordinate that amongst the maintainers. And then uh, after the next community call, they will, uh, I'm assuming that the votes will all be unanimously in favor, but uh, they, they will be brought on as official maintainers and added to code owners at that point and the appropriate GitHub uh, user groups. So, um, yeah, just wanted to, to, to briefly introduce Matthew and Chung. Uh, I don't know if you just want to say hi to the group here, uh, but thank you guys so much for all that you've been doing in the project and uh, look forward to continue to, to working with you uh, as, as potential maintainers going forward. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Nico, for a very generous introduction. Yeah, I have nothing particularly to add. At this at this point, but yeah. um, thanks, Nico. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll, we'll wait for the next call. All right, thank you, guys. All right, uh, moving on through the agenda. So, uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is uh, some of the things that are interesting and exciting coming up in Firefly one point three. Uh, so, some of those we're just going to talk about and just briefly touch on in bullet points. Uh, but one of them in particular. Uh, Enrique has offered to actually do a little demo of. Uh, so, so most of these things that are on this list are, are things that are, uh, with the exception of the last one, um, are, are things that are already merged into main and are there. And if, if you like bleeding edge software, you can, you can go check them out today. Um, they have not been in an official feature release of Firefly yet though. So that's just kind of where, where most of these changes currently stand. Uh, but with with no further ado, I will turn it over to Enrique to demo one of the new upcoming features in Firefly 1.3. Sounds good. Let me share my screen. All right. Um, so yeah. So as as Nico mentioned, we did a lot of MTLS work, um, and recently one of the big changes that went in is the ability to configure um, MTLS for webhooks. Um, as I think you most of you are aware, there's ability for you to listen to certain ev events um, through webhooks. Um, and now we've made it to be able to configurable um, the uh, configure a different TLS configuration per subscription. Um, so now when you create a, a namespace um, or when you specify in your uh, configuration YAML, you can specify a set of, and I'll show you in a second, a set of TLS um, certificates or PEM files that then you can reference when you create a subscription. Um, so if we quickly look at the um, docs, so under each of the namespaces that you are predefined, you can add a TLS uh, configuration where you can give it um, a name um, for that TLS configuration that you reference afterwards. You'll have a, a path to a CA file, a path to a certificate, a path to a client auth. In the case where you're doing MTLS, so this is TLS or MTLS, if you want to enable it, and you can also do some verification checks as well. Uh, you also need your, your key file as well, because that'll be your private key for the um, MTLS communication. Um, and that will allow you to then use that as part of a subscription. Um, so we take a quick look at the API um, and I'll show you one that I just pre-created. Um, so I have a little sample Express.js um, server running locally, uh, which is secured with MTLS. So it has a server key, a server cert, 
the client CA cert that it trusts, um, and then it's requesting um, that the client provides a certificate and it rejects one that is unauthorized. Has a sample one that says hello and has a one that just console logs events from Firefly. So here, all my testing that I did earlier. So when, and it's not filtering. So at the moment it's whatever event that comes out of Firefly, we're able to just log it to the console. At the same time, I have using the Firefly CLI um, run a stack um, with two members in it um, and, and its own chain. And I have specified a TLS config for my predefined default namespace. Hopefully that's big enough. Let me know if you want me to zoom in. Um, and there is a TLS config here, which specifies a path to those certificates I generated. So that'll be the CA for the server, the client certificate and the client key. Um, so if we go back to the API, you can see that I create a subscription um, to my localhost 3000. That's where my express app is running. I want the data just to the events. And here I've referenced the TLS config name that was in my uh, Firefly configuration. So when an event um, is produced in, in Firefly that I'm interested in, at the moment, as I said, no future, so any events really, I will be able to use, it will, it will use, Firefly will use those TLS certificates to call my webhook endpoint. Um, so if we quickly check that, so I have a sample contract that I deployed as part of testing, um, and I'm just gonna invoke one of the functions, which is just the owner function. And if I execute that and I go back to my terminal, um, you should see a series of events have just occurred. So there's a little bit of debugging here that I put in Express that tells you that there's been a, an effective TLS handshake that's happened. Um, and you can also see another TLS. So first you get the success submitted and then you get the operation uh, succeeded. So yeah, that's a, a quick demo on how you, and you can configure your namespace with a set of TLS um, certificates and keys and then use that as part of subscriptions um, for webhooks today. Um, yeah, that's that's most of it of what I had to show. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you try it out, let me know, I guess. Thanks, Enrique. I uh, really appreciate that great demo. Fantastic new functionality there, uh, building on, on what's been there. And uh, thank you for the demo. Any, any questions on the what Enrique has shown here before we move on to just chat about some of the other upcoming features. Okay, cool. I will go ahead and share screen again so we can pull up the agenda here. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so just I, I really quickly wanted to just touch on a couple of the, the things that are in the new, um, in the upcoming release of Firefly. Uh, again, uh, most of these are merged into main and uh, I'll touch on the ones that are still in, in active development here. Um, one of the, the, the really exciting things, and um, maybe Andrew can, can chime in and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this one is, is mostly in main, but there may be a few um, smaller sub work items that are uh, still outstanding on this one. But um, so Firefly has long had uh, really powerful messaging features and functionality uh, in uh, what I think from what the earliest versions of Firefly, one of the really compelling features was to be able to attach a message or associate a message with a uh, a token operation, whether that was a, a token mint or a token transfer. And uh, it, it sort of allowed you to associate uh, extra data with the transfer, as well as having a, a link on chain that says that they go together. And uh, to be able to, to prove that on chain while keeping the, the payload of all this extra data, whether it was metadata or, or even another image or, or whatever it is uh, off chain as well. And so, so this is a really powerful feature of Firefly. We are extending Firefly's APIs to now allow you to, uh, to do the same type of thing with custom smart contracts and not just through the tokens APIs. So uh, there, there will be an ability to 
basically in your contract, if you add another parameter, a, a data parameter, which or argument, which is the, the last argument of your function of type bytes, it will allow, uh, well, it's for, for solidity in Ethereum contracts, it's type bytes, uh, I believe for fabric, it's just a string. Um, it will allow Firefly to associate a Firefly message with that contract invocation as well. Um, I think Andrew is on on this community call. I, I don't know. If, I know he's done a bunch of work on this as well. I don't know if he had any uh, details that you want to uh, chime in on there or anything else you want to add or, or maybe correct me if I have misspoke there in any way. Yeah, yeah, I definitely can. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Um, yeah, so I, I think you covered sort of the basics. Um, I do you want me to share the the fire and just kind of the overview for people to reference it? If I steal the screen share for just a minute. Yeah, if you want to. I, I really well, the shared. on the spot here. I didn't check with you if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, so this is um if anyone wants to go see it um in the the Firefly Fire repo uh, number 17. It's an open PR still, um, because like Nico said, the major functionality has been merged, um, but there's still a lot of sort of edge cases. And basically this this opens up some more of the core Firefly functionality in terms of how on and off chain coordination works. So it essentially gives you a lot more ways to shoot yourself in the foot if you use it in the wrong way. So I think there's still some work to be done here before we can consider it ready and shippable. But uh, Fire 17 is pretty fleshed out at this point, has gone through a few cycles of review and amendment. Um, and, and like Nico was saying, essentially, if you've used the Firefly invoke APIs at all, this should look very similar, right? Um, I, I can say, um, you know, I'm going to invoke an interface uh, at this address. I'm going to invoke this method with these inputs. And then there's this new bit that's been added, um, which looks very similar to when you're sending a broadcaster or private or potentially a token transfer with messages. Um, we're thinking that this might even become the main way um, to send messages um, with some other um, Firefly transaction, whether it is a token transfer or just some custom method that you've defined. Um, you do have to uh, add some parameters, right? You, if it's a, an Ethereum method, you have to have a bytes parameter on the end um, where some data can get packed. If it's a, a Fabric method, you have to have a string parameter on the end of your signature. Um, and basically Firefly is gonna pack this message. It's gonna assemble a message the same way it does um, in the normal messaging queue. Uh, and send that message offline. And then it's gonna pack the pinning data about that message in a predictable way so that if you follow these instructions, you can unpack it and basically do a batch pin uh, yourself in a custom contract in either Ethereum or Fabric. So definitely a, a more advanced feature um, for, for those who they're you know, comfortable with the sort of basic API invocation and the basic messaging capabilities. But I think this opens up a lot of really powerful ways um, to actually do custom on and off chain coordination. So that's all I'll say about it here. I think we have discussed this in an earlier form on a community call. So happy to continue discussion on the fire or on discord um, and definitely look out for this PR to get updated as the remaining pieces get merged um, and hopefully as you know, fully baked and available feature in 1.3 down the road. Awesome, thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah, any questions on that, on uh, associating so, messages? Yeah, yeah. I, I know this came up on a, a previous call, Andrew. Um, and so would a, would a, an accurate summary of this be that you, you now have a way of invoking a batch pin from a contract rather than directly from Firefly? Have I understood that correctly? Exactly. It's, it's taking what Firefly sort of codified as really the only opinionated smart contract that Firefly provides, this very simple batch pin, and it's exposing that in a predictable on-chain way. So you can invoke it from another piece of on-chain logic and then tell Firefly, you know, how to get off-chain stuff into your contract and have it pop back out um, with a coordination message on the batch pin contract. Cool. Okay, thanks, yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Yeah, good, good question, Matthew, thank you. Uh, any other questions on that one? Cool. Okay. Uh, I'm going to probably go through these next few a little bit more quickly. Um, that was, I, I think we've kind of touched on some of the most exciting things that are in 1.3. Um, well, there's, there's a couple other ones on here. Um, yeah. So uh, 
I think in 1.2, maybe we introduced an API that allows you to delete uh, local data, uh, which can be really useful for if you have um, you know, data retention policies and things like that. It can uh, allow you to purge data from your local database and from your local blob store in data exchange as well. Uh, continuing on that theme, uh, 1.3 will include additional API methods for deleting uh, other resources like token pools, uh, contract interfaces. Uh, and then there will also be this uh, a distinction between um, just creating something and uh, that uh, can be a separate operation from actually publishing that thing to the network if you're in a multi-party network. So uh, for example, you could create a uh, 1.3 will have the ability to create a contract API and not publish it to the rest of the members of the network. Uh, in, in, prior ver in the current version of Firefly and prior versions, in a multi-party network, as soon as you create a, uh, a contract definition or a contract API or, or a data definition, those things are immediately broadcast to all the members of the network. Um, the, <laughs> that made deleting them more complicated. And uh, so, so there's some, some uh, features that kind of work in parallel here, uh, giving you more flexibility, more control over where data goes and, and the ability to uh, remove it when necessary. Uh, Enrique has, has already demoed a, a portion of the next bullet point, uh, but there's configurable MTLS across all of the different Firefly microservices that use uh, Fire. There's a, a common HTTP request library that's used by uh, not only Firefly core, but some of the other services as well. And so anytime Firefly makes HTTP requests out, uh, it uses this library. And so there's a, a common set of configuration that can be applied to uh, all of the different plugins that utilize this within Firefly core. Uh, for enabling uh, secure service-to-service -service, uh, authentication and encryption. Uh, another new exciting feature that's in active development right now is Postgres support for EVM Connect Persistence. Uh, right now it uses LevelDB and uh, you'll be able to select between LevelDB and Postgres uh, for uh, storing uh, events and receipts and event streams and all that good stuff. Uh, so that that should um, probably come with some noticeable performance benefits as well, and so that's that's an upcoming change. Um, there's there's have been some improvements to the ERC eleven fifty five connector. I believe this one's already merged uh, that allow it to work with a, a wider variety of uh, it's more flexible in the contracts that it works with uh, in terms of different flavors of eleven fifty five. There are numerous performance improvements in transaction throughput uh, throughout the different layers of the stack. Um, it, that could be a whole other community call as to all the all the places that <laughs> we've we've improved small things here and there. But um, yeah, I just wanted to just briefly touch on that. Don't have time to go into all the the nitty gritty details there. And the, the last but not least is a, a, a new area of this is this will be the the biggest. Uh, or one of the biggest, uh, the, the, the first bullet point we touched on, uh, associating messages with, with custom contracts is, is a pretty significant architectural change and improvement. Uh, but, but the other one that's coming in this release is uh, active, active high availability as well. Now, this is currently in the design phase. Uh, there is, we've done a little bit of coding on it, but still a lot of uh, design and just sort of figuring out the, the architecture side of things. Uh, there is an issue on GitHub that has all of the, the the running list of work items that are related to it uh, that is up there if you're curious as to what it all entails. Uh, but the idea is that uh, it, it, the goal is to be able to run multiple instances of Firefly core uh, simultaneously. And each instance of Firefly core will use leader election to determine uh, which runtime is responsible for the critical threads that need to be uh, sequenced. And so, so one of the, the really core important principles of, uh, of blockchain and of Firefly is sequencing. And so anytime that, that there is a, a uh, deterministic or, or distinct sequence that needs to be established, uh, the, the, the Firefly core nodes will coordinate to uh, elect 
a runtime to be the the leader for that particular thread. And so uh, specifically that that comes in a couple of places. One is the event aggregator. Uh, so per namespace, there will be a runtime that is designated as the leader for the event aggregator. And that the other place that that is important is on a subscription. So uh, when a, a WebSocket client connects to Firefly core node and uh, begins listening on a subscription, there will be, there'll be one runtime that becomes sort of the, the leader for, for driving uh, that event subscription and delivering events to, to there. Um, so lots of lots of work still to be done on this one, but it is in the early phases, and uh, really looking forward to to seeing the uh, just the, the maturity of the product uh, in this area, and I think it's going to be a pretty exciting one. That is it for uh, kind of the, the areas that I wanted to highlight. Um, I guess any questions on on the the 1.3 roadmap or anything that we've touched on thus far? Hey, Nico, um, do we have a, a sort of a timeline in mind for 1.3? Do you have a, a sort of a finger in the air timeline for when when we might get out? Soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Excellent. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I think most of these are close to ready, with the exception of, of Active Active. Um, I suppose there's a possibility that we might... That, if if active active continues to get pushed out, um, we there's enough other interesting things that we might cut at one point three and and active active might slip to uh, the next feature release. But mm -hmm. uh, I I think I think a one point three is is due at some point. I I would say in the next month or or two at the most. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounds about right. I know this is being recorded, but that's not a commitment, just to be clear to, to everyone else who might be looking at this. Yeah, good question though. Any, any other questions? Uh, hi, Nick. Uh, what are the other contracts? Uh, this is my first call, I'm Balo. So what are the other contracts that you're trying to implement for ERC-1155? Because that is, that's what, well, hey, Bala, nice to meet you and, and welcome to your first community call. Uh, yeah, great question. Uh, I don't know, Andrew, is that one that, uh, that you could take there? Um, you may know more of the specifics of uh, new things that it supports now that it didn't before. Yeah, definitely. Um, essentially, we started out with a pretty opinionated set of ERC 1155 that we supported, right? Because um, uh, what we've kind of come to embrace, I guess, is that 1155 is a really, really open-ended standard. It's not even as opinionated as some others like ERC-20 and ERC-721. Um, mm -hmm. So we wanted to kind of get the best of both worlds in terms of making it useful to do things that you want to do with tokens, but also making it flexible. Um, so when we started out, we defined our own extension on top of uh, ERC 1155 that had some constructs for defining what would be a fungible token versus a non-fungible token and uh, defining a very specific way of partitioning the whole contract into different pools of tokens, which are, are two common things that you can do with 1155. You don't have to do either, um, but we wanted to specifically support a sort of opinionated notion of fungibility and of partitions. Um, and so what we've done kind of this past month or so is go back and adjust the connector to not only support that opinionated extension on 1155, but to let you specify a little bit more how you would use it. So basically there's more input parameters when you create a token pool that's backed by an 1155 contract. So you can specify if it has a factory or not, you know, and if it allows you to create a partition, um, or if you're just using an existing contract, you can use the whole contract as a single token pool, or you can use a partition of the token ID space by saying a start ID and an end ID and say, okay, you know, all tokens from zero to zero XFF are going to be representative of a fungible pool, right? So just a lot more parameters to hopefully support a wider variety of custom 1155s out there. Um, so definitely looking for people 
you know, kind of sponsor use that because, um, because you know, I've mostly used the sample that that we came up with, um, but but trying to support other flavors and looking for people to help uh, make sure that we're addressing those. Yep. Uh, thank you. I will try it out. So thank you. Then. That would be great. Cool. Great question, Bala. And thank you, Andrew, for the added detail there. I appreciate that. All right. Yeah, at this point, uh, happy to open it up to general discussion on any Firefly related topic, whether it's uh, about uh, things that we've discussed on the agenda for today or, or just kind of general conversation that folks want to have or questions that you have about the project. Uh, the floor is now open. So if anyone has topics that they'd like to discuss, uh, we've got a number of maintainers on today and we would be happy to chat about them. Um, I'm going to throw one other plug out from the maintainer side um, that we, in addition to 1.3, we are trying to get a 1.1. No, 1.2.1 a new patch release on top of 1.2. Um, yeah. I, I opened a PR with some backports that I think are needed for that. Enrique, I know you had tagged some changes that you might have wanted to, you might you know, have thought are necessary for a patch release. So just kind of a, a bump for maintainers and contributors that are on the call. Um, I would love to tie that off sometime soon because I think there's some really important fixes. I started a thread on Discord a while back. I can kind of bump it back up. Um, but yeah, we'd love to get those fixes out to everyone because I think there's some known deficiencies in 1.2.0. Yeah, it's a great call out. Thank you. Any other topics that folks want to discuss today? Uh, if not, I'm happy to give people the, the time back. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Uh, looking forward to uh, the, the, the vote to bring uh, Matthew and Chung on for uh, as maintainers the next time. And uh, yeah, thank you all. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.